Welcome everyone to the Pep Talks Personal Empowerment Podcast. This is Roberto Amadeo Maratochi, um, founder and director of the Ministry of the Diamond Light. In today's episode, we will be speaking with Katarina Lotze, a beautiful soul, a dear friend, um, a spiritual and mystical teacher, um, bringing to her clients the practical ways she helps them as a mystical and spiritual teacher and mentor. Um, she's the founder of the Lemurian Dreams Academy. She offers Akashic Records readings. She's a medium, spiritual mentor, which I mentioned, um, and life coach, an archetype therapist, um, many things, um, past life therapist, inner child therapist, and a trans channeler of ascended masters. So um, she's a modern day mystic an intuition trainer and a supervisor for light workers. She's very passionate about what she offers to people for their healing process and supports this process in a very loving and practical way. So Katarina, welcome. I'm excited about speaking with you today and sharing with our audience the profound work that you do. So tell me a little bit about yourself and what your spiritual journey has been and how you came to do what you're doing now. So, hello Roberto, so nice to see you, thank you for having me. And as you probably all hear, I'm uh, from Germany. <laughs> so English is not my mother language, but I will try my best <laughs> to speak understandable and uh, to be able to express everything that I would like to say. Um, yeah, I came along uh, a long way. <laughs> from my awakening process to the point where I am now and where I founded the Lemurian Dreams, Dreams Academy and work in this kind of spiritual works uh, professionally. Um, I would like to share at the beginning um, how it happened or what happened that I became clairvoyant because I'm a clairvoyant medium and I, I can see energy with my physical eyes so it's like it would be in front of me like a movie or like a real person um, but I can differentiate if I, I see a spirit um, or a spirit guide or um, real so-called real <laughs> physical uh, person uh, there are some signs where I recognize this and normally uh, we we just know yeah if, if this is like a spiritual sight or this uh, a real person, a real physical person that stands in front of you. Um, at the age of 24, um, my inner calling started um, and I moved from one day to the next from a big town. I was born in Munich. I moved to the countryside and changed my life from having a cool nightlife uh, life, lifestyle and being with avant-garde people and being a cool person <laughs> and working in a, in a jazz uh, bar and so on. So really like urban um, lifestyle. Um, my my soul really called me to, to uh, end this kind of, of life and to move to the uh, countryside. And I was so guided that it really happened from one day to the next. And here my uh, spiritual opening started. I've spent a lot of time in the forest, I spent a lot of time in the nature, I swam in lakes, I uh, went by bike through the nature and I really uh, took a sabbatical year. So there was one year where I had no um, demands from the outside world, where I really could be a free person, a free spirit and um, this was very important for me to to really open my heart to really um, come deeply in, in touch with my with my soul's energy because as we all know we are pretty much programmed by by society by the school system by the work system so it, for me it was very important to have this free time by not being influenced from the outside world. And I'm until now, I'm very, very grateful that Spirit arranged this for me because it was really guided. Otherwise, it's not that easy to just change our life from one day to the next. But this this should be like it was. And 
for, um, after this uh, one year experience, I met a friend of mine, I knew her since a longer time, and I saw in her energy, I saw in her face that her energy had changed in a very, very positive, very beautiful way. And I didn't know what she, what she had started, but I knew she had started something new. And I said to her, without knowing what she was doing, I said to her, I see you have started something new and whatever it is, I also will do, I also want to do this. What do you do? And she said she started practicing yoga. <laughs> and so, so it was also pretty magical how I came to yoga. And I said, oh, that's amazing. I see your energy is so refined, it's so beautiful. Yeah, well, who's your teacher? <laughs> I want to go to the same teacher. So I came to the yoga teacher and uh, when I moved to the countryside, I changed my diet to raw vegan diet. I think this was also uh, the reason why this uh, like purifying process was so intense at that time and also the opening process um, because I, I had this very pure um, diet. Um, I stopped it after a while, but f at this time it was totally the right thing. And then I would say the mixture of yoga and raw vegan diet um, really refined my energy in such a way that my spiritual side opened from one moment to the next. I can, afterwards, I can talk a little bit more about this, how it happened because it was, on one hand, it was also a bit um, scattering for me because I hadn't expected this. Um, it was, but also very, very interesting. And from that time on, I'm able to see uh, energy, past lives and spiritual guides and so on. So that really came to you, you I think you said when you were 24 that you started that process and, and everything. So um, as a child, Maybe looking back, you might see some things, but like before that, did you like have no kind of, you had no idea, like, like this was a really big transition for you? Uh, so this is a very uh, beautiful question. Thank you for asking it, because even as a child, I had a heightened awareness, but it wasn't that physically uh, seen. Um, it was more like a knowing. For example, I knew uh, if people weren't themselves, if they acted out from their egos, I could feel this, I could see it in a way, but it wasn't that I saw like spiritual guides, how I, I'm able to, to see them nowadays, but it was more um, a, yeah, a heightened awareness, a high um, kind of empathy as well. So I felt people's emotions, then they, they were my own, or I, I felt even felt uh, when people had physical pain, I could feel it in my body. And this I, or I have always had since my childhood. Yeah. yeah and, so, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry, and uh, to, to finish that, and sometimes when I said things that I, that I saw, um, it, it wasn't um, very welcomed because people <laughs> didn't <laughs> like that much to hear to hear the truth about themselves, or that they even didn't know their own truths, or they rejected the truth. So I learned pretty early, uh, in a very early age, it's better not to speak about all these things that I that I'm aware of, <laughs> because people don't like that much to hear to hear them. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I experienced, it's very interesting. I experienced the same thing as a child, almost exactly the way you describe it. It's like, I knew things about people. I knew what was going on and eternally. I saw their, the essence of their soul. I'll say it in a really mystical way, but I, I knew who the best part of, I could see the best part, part of them, but I can also see all of the shadows in them and the things they were struggling with. And when I, if I ever, not as a kid, I wasn't going around saying, oh, you know, but I was noticing it, I kept quiet. And I w was treated very badly <laughs> as well. So I completely understand that. And I think that's coming up because, you know, for people, for audience that are watching or come across, across this, um, this conversation, um, 
it's imp- I, I felt alone. I felt like I was the only one in the world that was experiencing this. So it's now I look at it as such an amazing, it was such an amazing gift to be able to remember that as a child and and to be able to know that because now in all the work I do when I finally had my awakening to my mission, it's like I that's 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 what makes me be able to do what I'm yeah. able to do. So um it's very beautiful. I want to maybe talk a little bit like when you um and we've spoken about this you know on our own um about how you how you see energy and how you said you're a supervisor for light workers and you had mentioned to me once that you that um somebody can be doing energy healing work or whatever the kind of you know spiritual work that they're doing and you can see energetically what's happening yeah I'm in the client yeah th- this is also a very beautiful question um to finish the childhood thing what i also wanted to say um and i think that you felt similar i feel i feel you felt similar and you you also mentioned it in, in a way um it's about uh when we have when we have this souls um memory where we where we do come from and we land here on this planet where the a society doesn't live um its highest ver- highest possible version and we see this we feel this we know this then in a way we feel abandoned or alo- alone lonely or like <laughs> i call myself like a, a cosmic orphan i i felt so different than other people and i know you it was the same for you and i think it's for many many light workers the same that as as children we feel lonely or nearly abundant even though we have only nearly like orphans even though, even though we have parents because we feel that we don't really fit and it's good that we don't really fit because we are the ones who should change the the system so we can't be the same otherwise we we, we wouldn't um open doors for for changes yes that was so beautifully said because that that like that really kind of that was what i was experiencing I mean, yeah. basically, I was like, "What the hell? Where am I? Like, what the hell am I doing here? Like, like, um, did I get off the wrong, you know, cosmic bus? Like, <laughs> why, why does my mother wake me up in the morning? Why doesn't let uh, she lets me sleep until I wake up on my own? Things like that. <laughs> okay, so when we come to, uh, to seeing energy, I I quickly would like to continue how it happened that I, I could, okay. could see energy and from there I will explain how it is for me to see energy in readings and so on or in supervision that, um, that you mentioned. Um, after this uh, too, I, I had this sabbatical year and then I knew okay I have to work again but I, um, I had another year, you also can call it a half sabbatical year where I just had some jobs and had not, not a proper serious profession that had taken a lot of energy and responsibility for me so uh, at that time i worked i one of my jobs was working in an ice salon ice shop it's called ice shop or ice salon in in english where you can ice cream, the ice ice cream? cream, ice cream shop <laughs> is it called ice cream shop or yes yeah okay i worked there and um Near, uh, beside the ice cream shop, there there was a um, hairdressing shop, and there worked a guy. And I immediately had this connection to this guy, and I felt I know this guy from somewhere. So, and uh, long long story cut short, I knew this guy from a former life, but I wasn't aware. I just knew there's this beautiful connection. I know this guy from somewhere, and we always said nicely hello to each other and so on. And then one day he bought um, a cube of ice cream and there was this window, this ice, uh, this window where, where you sell the ice cream. And from one second to the next, it was like we are here on Zoom. My side was uh, um, divided into, into two, two screens. And on the, I, I remember it like it was yesterday. On the left side, I saw this guy buying the ice cream. On the right side, I saw him standing on a boat, like waving towards me, 
leaving the la harbor on this wooden sailing boat and such a deep sadness came and, and I felt such a deep sadness or such a deep sadness came into my um, field and I knew I won't see him again. This is the last time I will see him. Okay, and this was the first imprint and then uh, from that time on um, a lot of memories came up in, in dreams in uh, during the day and I went through the whole life and through the whole thing and it was a traumatic uh, experience. I went through all the emotions, through all the memories and so on and so on. And this opened my spiritual sight. And after this experience, I saw former lives in, in the auras of all people. And there was no filter, there was no control. So you can imagine when you see 20 people, you see minimum 20 lives. And normally there were different lives in the aura of one person. So I saw many, many things and I was very overwhelmed. But I, I knew in my heart that this is that this uh, was clairvoyance. So I, I had not, not the fear that I drove mad, <laughs> but my rational mind tried to categorize it or try to understand what was going on. And I had heard from my yoga teacher, okay, the former lives exist. And at that time, when I heard about it, I thought, wow, that, this would be amazing, but how can I know? I'm not really sure, but if, if this is true, this would be amazing. So I, I, I could categorize, categorize, is this correct? So I, I could understand um, what was going on. You are muted. <laughs> yes, I just noticed. Um, categorized, that's how you categorized. Yeah, <laughs> categorized. So I could categorize, um, okay, the, what I see are former lives. And as I understood the process oh. where I went through, um, but, but um, yeah, I quickly have to switch my charger on. I'm sorry. That's okay. Otherwise, so and now uh, probably you will see me from the side because then the big screen is. Yeah. <laughs> now I have the big screen on. Now you see me from the side. Okay. Um, yeah, I knew what it was and I went through the whole emotional process. And um, nowadays, when I see energy, when, for example, a healer books a supervision with me, I le um, it's very good when the healer has a client with him or her and uh, does the healing. And, and it's, it's no difference if I see the person on Zoom or if I see the person in um, person. In person, live in person. Yeah, because um, it, it looks the same. So, so I can see the energy on Zoom and I can see the energy uh, in, in so-called real life as well. And I can see the like the colors um, on, on which part of the body or aura the healer works. So it's for me, it's like a, like a movie. <laughs> and then I can take some loads and um, I had one healer from, from London who booked some supervision with me and it helped him a lot to uh, increase uh, the self-confidence because he knew he felt the energy flowing through the, through the palms, uh, radia he felt the palms radiating, but he wasn't really sure what I'm doing. And he had beautiful results. So the people were really better or they were healed. But for him, it was very helpful to have this explanation what he did. And the funny thing is when I described what he has done, the client confirmed it and said, yeah, I also saw this purple light. And yeah, I also felt it in, in, in the neck or um, where, where the um, healer worked. So he had the confirmation twice. Wow, I may, I may like, I may call you up because I do energy healing work. So, and I've had some, some interesting things the clients are experiencing, and seeing different colored light and stuff like that, that I'm not actually seeing that they're seeing that. I'm feeling like I know, I know what's going on, but it would be great to be able to um, confirm from an outside source, which would be you and your and and your eye for this. 
that oh yes this is this is what this is what's going on i think it's like it'd be a great tool for healers and practitioners to um get even better to to evolve their work because then you have more understanding of oh when i'm doing this this is this is what's actually going on and what is also very interesting, what I figured out in, in many readings that um, I gave are the synchronicities. And we had it recently, both of us. Yeah? We spoke about some so, uh, a special topic and then all those synchronicities popped up. So when we, when we experience synchronicities, perhaps I, I or you should quickly explain what synchronicities are for people who perhaps don't know this. Oh, I would love for you to, if you'd like to. Okay, so what is a synchronicity? A synchronicity is a, um, a similar energy that is attracted by the energy that we uh, that we caused. For example, um, in in the, I have it nearly after every reading um, that after the reading, for example, a friend of mine or a client or someone else sends me a certain kind of picture. And the picture is related to the reading I just gave. And I had one reading and um, a past life came, um, came up where the father of this client were, uh, was killed by a bear in Canada. It was in a former life and she was around five years old, very shocked. And uh, the shock was still seen in her aura like a layer of ice. And the whole thing was like revealed and uh, released and healed. And after this healing, I, I went on YouTube and I saw a picture there where a little girl at that age that she had in the, in the reading, uh, in the past life, made like, ah, she looked very frightened. And behind the little girl was a, a big bear. So it was, <laughs> so it was photoshopped, yeah. So yeah. it wasn't real that the big bear was behind the five years old girl. But I, I thought, how is this possible? Yeah, it just it came just, to you. Yeah. So it just uh, was about this in the reading. And then I see this picture. And um, when we have these synchronicities in our lives, um, the main re reasons for, for them are, first, that we are aligned with our source energy, that we are aligned with spirit, and that spirit really um, wants to talk to us. The same is, for example, when we have a question and then we see um, an advertisement and we read directly the answer of, uh, on our question. We all know this. Or we switch the radio on and the text of the song is the answer of our question and so on. So um, it's, uh, and since I give, offer professional uh, readings, I have so many synchronicities and this really shows when we follow our heart, when we uh, really fulfill our soul purpose and when we work for spirit, we are so aligned and we are so much in the, in the truth. Yeah, that's, why, that's why, you know, I think I was talking about this um, yesterday <laughs> with someone as well, um, that it's like, yes, we're getting all of these messages are all around us. Um, but it's it's verifying and validating that we are aligned on our path, and I I think that like you know for people that that, that doesn't happen as often, it doesn't happen. It could be a, a signal that okay, I need to think about: Am I really aligned on my path? Or let me just first they have to. I'm going to listen. Give permission. I'm going to listen to these messages that are all around me because it's helping guide me. I think that's how spirit guides you on one way on your path. Um, I experienced so, okay. When I, when I recently, I felt like uh, that slowed down for me, getting synchronicities and I call them like bread breadcrumbs to follow for your life, your life soul's path. And it's like that slowed down. And the second I committed more to my mission and what I'm supposed to be doing, it all started. It all started coming back. All these d different synchronicities. So, yeah. I thought you brought something up very important. Like people, you know, they can come to come to us obviously and get the very deep messages and healing, but all around you in life, 
It's like, look out for these things. Like if you hear a song on the radio and you have a, there's like, it makes you remember something specific or, you know, you just, someone just said something to you and then the song says something to you, that line of the song that sticks out, then it's like, okay, this is a message that I need to think about whatever that is. So I'm glad. Yeah, and some people really think these are coincidences, but I say there are not so many coincidences in this world. This is, this is not possible that it's a coincidence because it happens all the time. So, <laughs> when you, have was, you know, because some people say this, ah, yeah, probably it's a coincidence, and I say no, it, it's not possible that there are so many coincidences because when it's after each reading, there must be a truth behind it. <laughs> well, when you know, when you had the synchronicities with me the other day, um, I was with a client, you know, and actually I just I didn't even think about it. I spoke about I just spoke about that. They saw pink, white, and and blue light um, orbs, um, and then then you started seeing. I was just talking to you about it, and you you, you all of this stuff, like all of these images and things, came to you. It went the whole day. <laughs> the whole Sorry day about I that. <laughs> it didn't stop, you know. All the day, I got all these synchronicities and the colors, like like blue and white and pink. It was amazing, yeah. <laughs> That's wonderful. So um, I want to go back a little bit because you were talking about past life and seeing like a split screen, right? So you're seeing the person um, at the ice cream window that you felt like you already knew in some way. And then you saw a previous life all in like a, like a split screen for you. Like, is that is this something that just comes to you when it's supposed to? Or are you seeing colors and energy and these things all the time? Yeah, I quickly would like to finish this story. Oh, okay, uh, please. And but it's, it brings me to, to the, the answer of your question. Because um, the one thing was what I saw. Yeah, I saw this wooden boat. I saw the whole life. And then one day I told this guy, because he, he said to me, you know what, I have the feeling I know you since ever. What is this? And I said, yeah, if you believe in former lives, I know from where we know each other. And we went for a co we went um, in a cafe and we, we had a coffee together. And then I told him the story, what I had seen. And he became a bit pale and nearly fell from the chair. And he said, this is not possible. You have to come to my house. I have to show you something. And he was a painter, a very gifted painter, even um, though his normal profession was a hairdresser, but he was a very good artist. He had painted everything. Everything was hanging at the wall. And I was like, okay, that's really amazing. So things like that really can happen. And he didn't uh, remember consciously that life, but subconsciously he could remember and had painted all these pictures out of his soul. This is very amazing. So, and at that time, at that time, I had no control over the side, so it was all the time on, and I saw all the time, and I saw people, I saw former lives, but not in the split screen like I had seen this former life. It was more like I saw the aura, and in the aura, the moving, the movie was going on. And at that time, there was no internet, but I really tried to to check if the things I had seen, if they really existed, and I went to the library and looked for it, and I figured out, yeah, it really exist, it existed, and I had, hadn't known it, before, known it before. And, and after a while, um, I, I learned to control it in a way, and I also um, um, participated workshops and education how, uh, about channeling, past life therapy, uh, motivated by all these experiences that I had. And then I learned how to deal with it, that I can switch it on, I can switch it off. And um, normally it's switched on when I, I give the reading. But some sometimes I say when it's very obvious, but for other people it's not that obvious. But for me it's so obvious that I also see it in, not all the time, but in daily life, it can be that I see I see it um, because it just, it's so obvious. And <laughs> some weeks ago, I was in a bank, and there were two um, people who worked there, and I had to laugh so much because for myself, because in 
Bo both of them I saw a former life. The one was a Roman guy in ancient Rome. <laughs> a very uh, like um, yeah, rich guy and the other one, uh, he was a, a guardian for goats in, in ancient Greece. <laughs> and they were together and behind the encounter and I saw these woman lives and it was a bit funny. I don't know why I saw those lives because it's nowadays it's not that usual that I see it all the time. But it was really funny that both so the ancient Greek guy and the ancient Roman guy together in the bank. It was really um, funny. So things like that can happen, but normally they, my site opens when when I book for a reading. Okay. That's wonderful. I'm, I mean, I'm just like a funny thing that I was thinking is it's like you don't even have to go to the cinema. You can just walk around. <laughs> this is what I always say. This is what I always say. Is I really can save the money for the cinema because it's really it's amazing when it comes to past life readings, the stories. They are so interesting, so amazing, sometimes really dramatic as well. But you really don't have to go to the city when you are past life reader. Um, so let's let's like kind of go go more deeply into like past life and past life therapy, um, because all of this comes to you. And um, I'm sure over the years you have like a, a, a deeper understanding of how it all works. So um, how how does doing past life therapy help us in this life would be a question. Yeah, so what I really figured out, what I really learned was for the following. Um, when we have, so special um, experience, the experiences that we make in a certain life um, create a certain imprint in our soul. And what I also figured out was um, when the more emotional the situation was, the deeper the imprint is. So when it, uh, it it can be a very positive emotion like deep love, or it can be um, a very painful emotion like um, having a loss or lo losing losing a loved person or losing the home or um, even losing the life. Yeah. And um, now yeah. And um, so and the the more. Uh, the deeper the imprint is, and what is what um, is created from this imprint is a kind of autopilot, and it's a kind kind of attraction to situ to similar situations. I call them karmic loops. So, for example, um, when a person uh, lived a life where where it was set set down because um, perhaps this person was in slavery. Or had to work for for a, um, had to work very hard uh, for a person and so on. And when the imprint is deep enough, people will repeat this again and again and again in the the life that come after that life. You know, then they will work for this person. They will work for that person. They will be set down. They they um, will be poor and. Um, will will um, experience the the same kind of lifestyle let's put it like this again and again and again and nearly in every reading when a past life comes up and when i describe the past life and i have a very detailed site so they get a lot of details about the past life nearly every time the clients say oh it's so similar to to the actual life and i say of course <laughs> because in that life this imprint was set, and then you were all the time on this karmic loop. And uh, it's uh, this is uh, like um, an imprint of lifestyle, but it's also uh, um, a lot. It's about um, emotional imprint. For example, not feeling good enough, not having enough self-love, not feeling worthy enough, or feeling feelings of guilt. And most of these uh, memories are in the subconscious mind so it's not that easy to get access to them but from the subconscious mind they really have an effect on our actual life and hinder us to really uh, follow our free will because we are on a, on a karmic energetic loop so we can't use our free will because we are run by this autopilot and also um, not to reach the highest possible version of ourselves because we limit ourselves through 
uh, emotional imprints through uh, mindsets that were created long time ago, but we still believe in them. So when it comes to past life therapy, a certain past life is brought up and spirit all, always shows me the core life. So there was a certain life, a core life where the imprint was set and then we can say, okay, there were 20, 30, 40 other, or even more other lives where the person followed a similar imprint or a similar like um, experience. But when we heal the core life, we heal all the other lives as well. And while um, uh, bringing the, the past life into the conscious mind, it's like opening the box of Pandora, the, the um, energy that caused the imprint is released. And then, funny enough, many people get after the reading similar situations in their actual life. And when they act differently, like they did in the past, then the, the um, layers are sh from the karmic layers are shed. And then we can profoundly heal this topic. And then we won't repeat it again, because then we really, we broke, I always say, call it like we broke the karmic cycle. Yes. Yes, that thank you so much. That's like I've never heard anyone describe it quite in that way. <clears throat> but as you were saying that, I've had some past life um, therapy. I've experienced it for myself. Um, and that karmic patterning, like the loop you're talking about, I was like, oh, I see this this life, this happened. okay. This happened again, this happened again, this happened again. Um, and even like certain things where I'm just like, why do I feel this way? Like, like, you know, I, I, I like you were saying before to me before we were on, on, you know, recording, you know, I was telling you that I was, I was used to be very afraid to even speak in public. And you were like, you would never know it. It's like, but for some reason that imprint is still there in a way, I I don't listen to it. I still do everything that, you know, I need to do. And I'm, I'm speaking now in public, but it's like, would that, would you say that those nagging feelings, those things that you're just like, this doesn't make sense to me because look at all the things I do and I feel good when I'm doing this. But why is that still there? Would, is that like a signal for people? It's like, oh, this is about, my this is about a loop in my past life that's followed me yeah um i think it's so it's uh, so long there so long there until we profoundly heal it and that is why uh it's so important um, that we work spiritually on these um, things because when we just uh, work um, with psychotherapy on it uh, psychotherapy is a very very important tool um, where we come to the next topic, the inner child work and the, like this kind of healing, uh, what is also very, very important. But when you don't see the, the, like, um, the root of the problem, because what we experience in the past, in our childhood, is the result of our past, of the imprints of our past lives. You know, so and when we just work on the childhood, it might be not enough, because when we have a strong imprint from a past certain past life, we can't reach this. So then we we move on with. So we I always say the best thing is first we we do the inner child work, then we do the ancestral karma work, because there's also reason why we are born in a certain kind of family and all the ancestral energy that is all the ancestral karma um, that is um, there in this kind of family and uh, our our childhood and our ancestral karma connects us to our personal karmic cycle it's all connected because we are we are born in a certain family we are attracted in this kind of family because of a reason so it's not a coincidence why we had the parents we had, why we why we were born in a certain country, and so on. Yes, and do you think like to me like I'm just hearing Akashic Records, Akashic Records as well as being 
you know, integrated into this. Now I kind of understand why you do all, all of these things because they work really well together. So it's not just about, from what you're saying, I'm getting, it's not just about going to the past life. It's not just about doing the inner child work. It's like you have to do that ancestral work as well. Um, and then the Akashic Records comes in for me because you you have a contract that you make for yourself for your current incarnation of your soul, the parents that you're born to, the situations that you want to experience, the people in your soul group that are going to show up and be the foil for your or challenge challengers so that so that you can grow out of these cycles. Yes. And when we come to the ancestral karma, so I think we could talk for hours and hours and hours to bring all the like pieces together into the, the big the big screen. But um, I'll have I mean, to have you back. We can do. Yeah, I, I hope so too. Perhaps we should we should uh, meet meet again, um, minimum uh, once. So because um, when we work on our ancestral karma, psychic mediumship is a very important tool. So. Um, when I started with psychic mediumship, learning this, um, I quickly would like to share how I, it came to this, because I, I was booked for a soul reading, and um, pretty often when I made the appointment, I already see the, the spiritual guide. This guide is showing off, and I, I know, okay, this is the guide of this person, then I say, yeah, we, we see each other. <laughs> Uh, in the reading, yeah. come, come <laughs> so at this time. Talk to me all the time. The next two days, we will uh, talk about everything in the reading. And um, I made an appointment with um, Czech client, and um, I saw um, a young girl at the age of six or seven, and she was she appeared very physically. So she really, I saw her like I see you, but the feet didn't properly touch the floor. So, and I knew she, she can't just appear in my office. So my rational mind also knew, okay, she's a spirit. But I also saw because the feet didn't properly touch the floor and she had a white dress on and she just looked at me and I thought, okay, yeah, she might, she might talk in the reading. But I saw her the next day again and then and I asked her, who are you? And she said, yeah, I'm the older sister of the client you will have tomorrow. And I said to her, as I always do, Okay, we will see each other tomorrow. <laughs> Goodbye <laughs> tomorrow. And then you're early. I... You're like you're a little early. <laughs> <laughs> so I I, I get uh, back to you soon tomorrow. And um, I started the reading with that. And we before we spoke about trust. Yeah, when we are mediums, when we are readers, we have to to be in full trust. On, on what we see. Otherwise, we could mess things up. And of course, we don't want to mess things up. But then you, I have to start with with the system. And I asked the client and I, I said to her, uh, did you have an um, older sister uh, who is already deceased? Or did your mother have a head and did your mother have a, an abortion? And she said, yeah, my mother had an abortion because before I was born. So this sister this girl that i had seen was never born but had to be in the in the womb of the mother to link into the ancestral karma there and the sense of the sister was to bring the client um through her childhood because what of course i didn't know this but it made a lot of sense she had a very difficult childhood and her older sister from the spiritual side helped her to really stand the childhood and to really um, be protected and so on. And because of this experience, I thought, okay, if this was a deceased one, I would like to learn more about it, to know what I'm doing there. And so I came to psychic mediumship. And uh, I, I needed a longer time to understand the sense of psychic mediumship, because I always thought ah, we can we can uh, call in the spiritual guides, they know everything, they can tell the clients everything. But over the time I learned that to really meet a an, an deceased ancestor is a different thing. And then we learn about the ancestral karma and what was going on there. And um, 
what is going through the generations and so on. That's wonderful. Yeah. I I have like I keep muting because I there's loud noises. I hope I hope the microphone's not picking it up outside. They're banging <laughs> around. <laughs> <laughs> but I was I was gonna say it's like you know you said you came to psychic mediumship I think it came to you <laughs> yeah <laughs> I think whatever you know it seems that and I've experienced this as well and I didn't understand why I did so many things like psychic mediumship remote viewing like channeling like all of this stuff started coming to me um, is because that's what different people need and different situations when they're coming to healing so so that um that girl that hadn't been born that came to you in spirit um that was what that your client needed in that moment that's why she, she came to you yeah so i think that um you know people that do this work um or developing you know their gifts to doing any any kind of this work um to really stay open like st stay open to whatever is going to come and not to, to limit yourself necessarily to yeah. to any one thing you might do that one thing and that's what you're supposed to be doing and that's and you're totally focused on that i'm not saying you know everyone should do other things i'm just saying be curious and from what you're saying it makes me more curious to just just stay open to what's to come what's going to come to you um, as a light worker. Yeah, and this is the very beautiful thing in readings because when I started uh, giving professional readings, at the beginning I used numerology uh, to get access to, to the energy of people and I prepared a little bit before the reading. So I calculated the numerology and by calculating it I, I got the first imprints how to start the reading and I followed the thread from there. And with more experience, I didn't need this anymore. I, and this was just a trust thing. So I wanted to be a bit sure uh, I have a concept. I know how to start and we'll move on from there with the neurology, what is beautiful, what is a really beautiful tool. But then the time came where I said, OK, I don't need this anymore. I just trust spirit so much that I know I go in the reading like a, a white piece of paper. I have no clue about what I will talk I will open my mouth and I probably I will see the guide, the spiritual guide. Normally I see the spiritual guide and the, the reading will start. It will be spot on. <laughs> but for this, you really need, need the trust and um, to, to just be there. And this is what, what our beautiful teacher, Thea Wood, said all the time to us. She said, you, you have just to be there. And we were a bit astonished, like, what, what just to be there? Yeah, just be there and then open you <laughs> all will happen and i think some of us were pretty frightened <laughs> how should this work but this is how it works and then and i'm so grateful because spirit shows all the time the most important thing for the person at that um, moment in time in their life can be a past life can be a childhood experience can be both can be several to past lives Whatever it will, or that the deceased grandfather comes through and wants to talk, what, whatever will come through, it's the right thing that should, should happen at that moment. And after the reading, all the synchronicities come, and this is so divinely guided. I'm so grateful for this opportunity and to be chosen to do this work. Yeah, like, and you know, I just want to say with that too, <clears throat> for people that are receiving readings, and you know, and seeking seeking that, I would say to them too, stay really open, just open to what's going to happen. Because I know, you know, I I have some clients that some clients are just very open. Okay, I know this is what you do. I usually tell people it's like, okay, you came for this, but if something else comes up, it's meant for you. You know, let's go with that. <laughs> Be open to going with that. Um, because sometimes what they want in that moment may not be exactly what is needed for them in that moment. And then maybe another time they'll come and that thing that they wanted before is now something that they needed. So, you know, it's important, I think, for clients to remember to um, 
be open because if the client is is kind of closed in some way that's going to affect um our ability as as channels and i mean not completely but it's going to affect the reading and you may not get as clear information that's so true because uh, um, certain kind of expectation really limits the mind and uh, you give me you you build the bridge to what spirit um, tells me to to, to say um, and it's uh, it's really about uh, the limit uh, the limited rational mind that we really understand the difference between the rational mind and the soul because the rational mind is normally programmed by different things by education by uh, thought forms from the from the past li from past lives from the childhood um, from education patterns from school system and so on and I don't want to blame the rational mind we need it it's very important but we should know that the rational mind is linear and has its limitations yes. and the soul I see the soul like a sphere and uh, with the soul's energy we have a much higher perspective on things and if we don't understand the difference between the, the rational mind and the soul's energy and when we mix it up we really create a certain kind of mess because in our rational mind for example we will play out our limiting um, beliefs beliefs and emotions about ourselves so for example if we have a soul purpose let's let's take the example speaking in public <laughs> so then um, if this is not not a healed pattern the rational mind will invent 100 um, arguments why you can't speak in public and you will believe your rational mind and you will say okay it's not for me but spoke uh, if we see it from the soul's perspective your sole purpose is to be a teacher to speak in public to be seen in public and to be that your future kind clients can find you um, and when you really are able to to feel your sole purpose you have to overcome the fears you will heal the, the uh, karmic pattern that like blocks you in speaking freely in public because probably you were prosecuted or whatever in a past life uh, here a lot of uh, especially with spiritual people a lot of blockages come from we should all have this in mind um, and then nobody says that it's very easy to really work through all, all our like topics issues from the past life it's it can be pretty annoying <laughs> <laughs> again I, I already worked 10 times on it yeah but we, we so we have the next round with it because we we all heal in the spiral um but that we really know where does the inner voice come come from does it come from our limited uh limited limited mind or from our limitations fears blockages that we created in the past or were created for us in the past or uh, are we connected with our soul's energy and our soul shows us the way and i say for beginners in, in spirituality it's not that easy to differentiate this and we really have to learn how uh, how um, to know which kind of voice is speaking of us yes because you know as you're saying that it's like the fit like you know those karmic patterns or wounding or childhood wounding or past life you know persecutions as you as you say um become filters exactly. our soul is like is like you know a part of us are seeing ourselves through that filter and I feel we have to, and I've spent many years of my life to to understand that and to not listen through those filters as I'm trying to to clear them. It's like recognizing them. So some of them are there, like you're talking about, you know, speaking in public for me. Um, that was like a filter. You're talking about it. That was, you know, the 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 story, the million ways that 
I shouldn't do this, but it was, it, it came to a point, it was like I would shut down. Like I had to present my work when I was, um, I was very young, I was in college. And, and I had to present it, it in front of all, like the entire faculty, all of the students, we all had to do this. And, and I was like, yeah, I can do this. And I was prepared and I did everything and I was getting there. And it was like, I started like sweating I started to, I was, I became so nervous that I actually, I never take anything, but back then I was like, um, I knew it might happen. So I was like, let me take a Xanax before I go in there. <clears throat> didn't work, didn't work. This pattern was so strong that it was overriding what I knew I was capable of doing. So, and why, why uh, because you say overriding the other way around, it's the same. So to overcome the karmic patterns, we have to do it differently in this life to override the karmic patterns. So it's not enough to just understand the problem or even to just understand from which life this pattern came from, what happened there in that life. Then all the opportunities come in our life where we are able to do it. And not only where we are able to do it differently, we have to do it differently like we would show spirit look, now I, I overcame the pattern, I act differently, and then we overwrite the script once more. Yeah, I wish you were around. <laughs> I wish you were around when, you know, I went through that, because I now that you say that, it's like I was led, I was in a way forced. I was like, things were happening that would put me in positions where I had to do that continually. And I, I allowed myself to, I said, okay, I, got, I have to do this, so I'm going to do this. And over the years, over the years, I became more comfortable. But also, you know, and maybe we can talk about this in another episode, it's like doing inner child work and some past life things. And that inner work, that's why I think the inner work is so important. Yeah. That you can, you can start to clear these karmic patterns, you can clear these imprints these programs um, yeah, and it's very very helpful if we know about those imprints because no uh, in no in daily life many people don't know about their imprints they just react in a certain way mm -hmm. uh, but for spiritual people when they when the awakening process starts all these things uh, are revealed all the time and have to be revealed that we can properly heal and then can return to our um, original source energy and can really fulfill and follow our source calling and soul purpose. I would quickly, um, to the end, I would um, speak about an, another very uh, interesting and important topic because Spirit tells me to, we quickly should speak about empathy. Because as mediums, we are highly empathic people. So if we wouldn't be empathic, we couldn't be mediums because as a medium, I have to be able to tune into the energy field of another person. I have to be able to tune into the Akashic records of another person, into whatever, into their ancestral karmic line, to be able to receive the energy of deceased ones. And I always said in my life, and I had this from, from my birth on and you as well, and many, many, many mediums like workers are, are really highly um, empaths. And um, I always said it's a gift and a burden at the same time. The gift is we are very sensitive. We feel what other people need, what the, sometimes I literally could hear what people thought. So I got the energy of the thoughts as well. Um, but it can be very overwhelming as well when we all the time feel the energy of others, their thoughts, their problems, their physical pains. It happened many times that I, I sat somewhere and I started to get a headache and then I realized the person uh, nearby me had a headache and so on. And um, I had one, one past life reading where a person was bitten by a snake and this was the cause of death. And while I was saying this i felt the pain on my neck from the snake bite now i know how it feels when the snake bites in the neck and after the reading you could see the the the, bite, the bites on my neck and it was seen three days 
like red like spots I try to to photograph it and um, this here, here if we ha have such a high empathy we have really to work on ourselves to learn how to set healthy boundaries how to set healthy energetic boundaries and how to be able to control our empathy in that way that it's not all the time that open and even in readings uh, that we have this even though we, we read the energy and we see the energy, that we don't become the energy. Because there was another reading where a, a person fell from the horse, fell off the horse, broke the leg, very complicated. And after the reading, I tried to, to get uh, stand up and I couldn't barely walk. Because I had taken the energy on almost that much that I really limped for some hours. <laughs> and this is a bit too much. And um, it's it's very important uh, that we learn this how to yeah how to set health boundaries how to protect our own energy. Now the bite aches again. <laughs> I talked about it now. I feel it. <laughs> and this reading was so, uh, over two years ago. I still have it because this seemed to be a very strong imprint in the field of the client. And now I feel it again. So that we are really um, careful with that. It's very very. Important. Okay, so I would I would say from what, what you, that was beautifully said because that's what a lot of people that do this work or empathic people that aren't quite doing this work yet it's like you become it's overwhelming like you said and it's a great thing to be careful to set up your own energetic boundaries and things and I've had something you know I was doing a reading and it was a blind reading so I didn't I didn't even know who the client was it was a remote viewing and for like two days before i had this sinus pressure in my head and i that i normally don't get and i'm just like oh my gosh how am i going to do this and then i had to meet with the client and the client had the same thing going on and it happened to be like the remote viewing which i didn't know ahead of time was was about a cat that had had like a head injury as well so it was like like and I was just picking that up, not even not even knowing. So that signaled me, because that doesn't happen. I usually don't get that, because I, I do have my healthy boundaries for things. Um, but it it can it can happen sometimes. Yeah. And and for, for that it's really it's really good to be aware of this and also to know how to clear the energetic field and things. When, really when I first started speaking with him it went away. So it was like, it was connected. It was connected to, I think, like I had to pick that up. I'm not, you know, I had to, to pick that up in order to understand what was going on. Yeah. Um, in this remote viewing. I think, I think to a certain extent, it really helps us as an orientation. Um, and I thought about if this, if I feel it as well, if this will help the client, then it would make a sense. Then I would say, okay, uh, you know, like uh, if we if we share the the pain, it's half, half pain for each person or something like that. If this would be the case, I would say, okay, then I suffer a bit to help the client to get rid of it. But I'm not really sure yet if this really happens or if we just feel it as well. I'm, I'm not sure about this yet, or if we help the client to really release um, the energy. Because I had um, other uh, interesting situations in my life that were connected to readings I gave. That things that came up in the reading happened before the reading in, in my actual life. Where I also thought, does this help the client to, to um, process the, the, the imprint and to let it go, that I helped them with my energy? But even here, we should, uh, I would say, to a certain extent, yes, but not <laughs> not too much, because we also have the right <laughs> to, to have our own life and our own energy field. <laughs> and this is very important, yeah. No, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop us here. I would love to speak with you for another hour, <laughs> hour and a half, um, but I would, um, I want to thank you. I want to thank you so much for sharing. Um, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just getting the words that I'm getting is is sharing your world and your process 
with us. I think um, even though a lot of people that do this work or maybe have received this work will understand in some way or have experienced some of the things you have, but I think your experience to me is very unique. Um, so that that comes out in your very unique perspective. And, you know, I, 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 under, I, under, I know you, I know you, you know, we, we chat sometimes and I, I know your energy. I, it's like, I, I know, I, like your soul is familiar to me, but there's like getting to know you. And now, now I understand what I was feeling. Like your work is very profound. It's very um, encompassing many things. And I, um, I find your approach just, um, I think people would really, 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 really benefit working with you. So I'm going to put um, all of your information where people can, can contact you or, you know, ask for readings, whatever you do, you have a website, I'll, I'll post that. And I actually, <laughs> I would like to get a past life reading with you. Because it's not something that I like, I would do it myself through meditations and things like that. But I wouldn't. Um, oh my gosh, that is so crazy. All of my lights went out and my internet went down. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna ask Katarina maybe to come. <laughs> so, Katarina, thank you so much um, for showing up today. Um, I know that we're going to have other conversations and other talks and get more into this work. You do a lot of um, beautiful work and you shared a little bit of, about how, how they all, how you integrate them and how they all work with each other. And it feels to me like, you know, we need, we need more conversations for people to get deeper into it. So I would appreciate that um, you coming back. We'll do another episode at some point soon. And I just want to thank you again for, for showing up for this, for showing up for me. Um, I'm very honored that you're here. So thank you, Roberto, for the invitation to this podcast. I really enjoyed the time with you. And I totally agree because today we just gave a little overview and we could talk for hours <laughs> about every detail to come deeper into, into each topic. And yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing you soon. Me too. And I'm going <coughs> to, excuse me, I'm going to list uh, like in the show notes or whatever they call it, like how people can contact you um, for readings and, and for, for your other work and, you know, as a mentor, et cetera, et cetera. So I'll get that information from you and then I'll post it for everyone so they know where to find you because um, you're definitely someone that, that, came came here to this strange place <laughs> this strange dimension we're in um to share courageous, co courageous and i was courageous enough to come here <laughs> yes yes i didn't you know i i think i mentioned to you before i don't know if it was on on camera that yeah. i was like what am i doing what did i just do to myself you know we are all very courageous people <laughs> yes but you know it's obvious this is your this is your your soul's plan and you're living into it and you know people are here you know it's important for to find people like you because there's a lot of people out there but to be with someone so authentic and so reputable and so knowledgeable and so connected and then someone whose heart wants to wants to bring that to other people that's like a magical combination so i can't um I can't say enough um, how valuable your work is. Thank you so much, Roberto. Yes, take care, and I'll see you soon. See you soon. Bye. Bye.